hit it. There you go. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, but today we want to look uh, in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Um, we have one verse for our text, and we're just going to speak from this one verse. I've got a couple verses I may reference at the end, but we're primarily going to deal with this one verse this morning. Amen. Amen. So if Stephen will find that and put that verse on the screen, we'll read it out loud together. Luke, uh, huh? The Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke 9, 23. Should be the first one. There you go. Are you ready? <clears throat> let's read. And he said to them, come on, everybody, let's start over again. Everybody read. Ready? Are you ready? Let's read. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Notice Jesus said here in this text that if any man will come after me. If any man will come after me, this is what he's got to do. Yes. Are you seeing this? So in other words, if you're going to seek Jesus, if you're going to be a seeker of Jesus, a follower of Jesus, he's telling us here, this is what you've got to do. Hallelujah. And notice it says, if any man. He's not talking to just preachers. He's not talking to just the super saints or those that are on another level. Amen. He's talking to anybody that wants to be a follower or a seeker of Jesus. He says this is the qualification. This is the qualification for anyone that wants to come after Jesus. And so today I, I want to talk to you from the subject qualifications to be a seeker qualifications to be a seeker can we pray father in the name of jesus lord <clears throat> i'm asking god today for your fresh oil your anointing that that destroys the yokes hallelujah that that annihilates our yokes god hallelujah to come on this vessel of clay <clears throat> come on these lips come on this mind come on this man hallelujah and turn me into another man this morning hallelujah and god let your glory be received in this house as this word goes forth with anointing and gets in the ground of our heart and produces fruit father for for your glory lord god hallelujah we want to leave here different than we came and we will by the power of your word father in the mighty name of jesus somebody say amen amen, amen. hallelujah Hallelujah. We're talking today uh, from the subject qualifications to be a seeker. Hallelujah. Qualifications to be a seeker. Hallelujah. Now, I, I don't want you to get this twisted with what we've been teaching about grace. Um, there are no qualifications in order to be saved in order to be the righteousness of God other than just believing on the finished works of Jesus somebody say amen but there are things that you're going to have to do in order to go deeper with Jesus not to necessarily earn a closer walk with Jesus or earn more of his love but just to go into a deeper relationship and a walk with this God. Uh, you don't want to just get in the door and stop. If I'm going to a store I like, whatever store you like it, you know, my wife likes to go to Cato, some of you men like to go to Bass Pro Shop, nobody likes to go to Walmart, but if you like to go, there's a store you like to go to, uh, you know, nobody goes into those stores and stops at the door. We go in and we go beyond the door and we look around at things in that place that we want, that, that we've got to have. And so you don't want to get in the door of the kingdom and stop because there are things in this kingdom God wants you to have. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's things in this kingdom God wants 
to give you, that he wants you to accomplish, that he wants you to see. And I believe in this church age that there is a large congregation of Christians that have been hanging out for years at the door. The door is crowded. Somebody say amen. There's a lot of room when you go deep, but it's crowded <laughs> at the door. Hallelujah. But remember, as I preach this to you, that under grace, and we've been talking about this, you've been supplied, come on, with everything you need in order to meet any qualifications to be a seeker. You can meet these qualifications because of the Holy Spirit and the power of God that is in you. Hallelujah. But you're going to have to make decisions in your life to step up to some things. So let's talk about the qualifications. Hallelujah. The scripture said, he said unto them, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So, so let's start with the cross. Somebody say the cross. cross. What does the cross represent when he's talking about take up his cross? Understand that the cross was Jesus's destiny. The cross was Jesus's purpose. It was his reason that he was on the planet. It was the reason that he left his splendor in heaven, left his majesty, left his place at the right hand of God, became a man through the virgin birth, hallelujah, came under the law, became subject to the law, gave up everything he had. He did that because he was going go to a cross. That cross was his destiny where he would stretch out out and die and sacrifice his life for you and I that we could be free it was his purpose it was why he was here and so notice that the scripture says that if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross somebody say his cross the cross represents purpose. It represents destiny. It represents the reason that you are on the planet. And this says his cross, which means each individual person that's going to come after Jesus has his own cross or his own purpose or his own destiny. In other words, there is a reason you were born and put on this earth. And I want to say to somebody in this house, hallelujah, that you are the right person at the right age, living at the right time. You are not an accident. You didn't show up on this planet as an accident. I don't care if your mom and daddy got together in a heat of passion in the back of a Chevy at Friday night on a football game. You are not an accident. You are meant to be here. You're supposed to be here. You've got a destiny. You've got a purpose somebody give God a praise that you've got a reason to be alive yeah you've got a you've got a cross you've got a purpose you've got a destiny he told Jeremiah he said before I formed you in your mother's womb I knew you and I already ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. So, Jeremiah, you didn't come out a farmer. You didn't come out a lawyer. You didn't come out a drunk. You didn't come out an alcoholic. Come on, you didn't come out a thief. You came out a prophet. Hallelujah. You came out a man of God. I want to say to somebody in this house, I know the devil got a hold of your mind. And I didn't mean to preach this early, but I'm going to go ahead and preach it anyway. I know the devil got a hold of your mind and told you that you're a loser told you that you're going to be nothing told you you're no better than your uncle who went to prison your mama who was a prostitute and a drug addict but the devil is a liar God said before you were formed in your mother's womb I already decided what I wanted you to be so down inside that troubled woman, down inside that troubled man that's going through hell in his life, has struggling with knowing who he is, there is a preacher down inside of there. There is a prophet down inside of there. There is a man or woman of God that can shake the nations. Oh, y'all got me started early. Hallelujah. Woo. 
Thank you, Jesus. Will somebody say, I have a cross. Come on, I have a cross. I have a cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so part of the qualifications of seeking Jesus is discovering and taking up my cross, my purpose, my destiny. You cannot be without purpose and be a seeker. Let me say that one more time. You cannot be without purpose and be a seeker. You are not a seeker if you are not someone that knows and is going after your destiny and your purpose in Jesus. Even if you don't know what it is yet, you got to know that there is one. And so being satisfied with just coming to church is not enough. Being satisfied with just giving a dollar in the offering and amen and a preacher every now and then. Hallelujah. And going through the religious ceremonies of Sunday mornings and sometimes Wednesday nights. Hallelujah. It's not enough. You've got to discover your cross. Your cross may not be to preach and it may not be to have revivals like I do, but we need some prayer warriors. And we could we could use some encouragers. Come on. Come on. We could use some exhorters. We could use some hallelujah that could give a word of encouragement and not a, a word of defeat. Hallelujah. Come on. We need some tongues with life in them instead of poison that kills. Is anybody hear me? We hallelujah. But you've got to discover your cross. You cannot be a true seeker and not know that you have a cross or know what it is or at least seek to find out and discover what it is. Hallelujah. Qualifications of a true seeker. Uh, But can I teach you something? Understand that Jesus compares your destiny to a cross. Here's where we get quiet. Hallelujah. A cross is where the flesh is tortured. Oh, you didn't hear me. Hallelujah. A cross is where the flesh is tortured. It's tortured through crucifixion. It's tortured through suffocation. Hallelujah. You understand that Jesus died on the cross of suffocation as his body hung on the cross the weight of him hanging on the cross would cause his rib cage to push against his lungs until the lungs could not expand and he couldn't breathe and the the death of the cross was a suffocation Jesus made seven statements on the cross, but the only way he could make those statements is he had to push himself up. Oh, I'm trying to paint a picture here. He had to push himself up with those feet that were nailed flat to a cross. Oh, hallelujah. In order to get a breath to speak. But the death of a cross is suffocation. In other words, that cross will deny your flesh of what it needs to live until it finally... Many times when they wanted to get the crucifixion over and the person to die quicker, they would break his legs so he couldn't push himself up and get any air. But I'm saying to you, your cross, your purpose, your destiny, are you hearing me? God, it's a place that will cause your flesh to die. If your flesh is not dying, you've not found your purpose. And you're not carrying your cross and you're not really seeking Jesus. I told you it's going to get rough today. If your flesh is not struggling with what God has called you to do, then that's not what God has called you to do. If there's not a part of you that wants to refuse what the spirit is revealing to you to do, then the spirit's not revealing to you your purpose because your purpose is a cross and that cross will kill your flesh. Oh, hallelujah. Can I, can, I, can I talk from my own life? Understand something. When, when I was young and I was, I was preaching and I was holding revivals and I was preaching at our home church for mom and hallelujah. And I was in my late teens and my, my early 20s, somewhere around 20, hallelujah. And the power of God was moving in my life. And mom came to me in, in that season and said to me, you know what? I think it's time 
Sean, that I, I'm going to, uh, I need to turn the church over to you, that I need to let you step in as, as, as pastor and man in my young, my young heart and my young mind. I was excited. I was ready. I was, I was willing because I'm thinking, man, I'm, I'm just going to get to preach now and I got my own place to preach and uh, I don't have to ask nobody for meetings and I don't have to wait on somebody to call me and, and all of these people love me that's here. And I'll probably fill this place up in a month. Hallelujah. And we'll have it. Man, I was, I, was, I was ready. Are you hearing me? But watch this. I didn't understand that if this was really my purpose or my cross, hallelujah, come on, hallelujah, then it was going to be something that my flesh is going to struggle with. I didn't understand that if this is my destiny, then it has to be a cross. And if it's a cross, then it's going to cause me to have to die in order to accomplish it. God Almighty. Are you hearing me? Oh, hallelujah. I saw my purpose, but I didn't see it as a cross. This is where a lot of folks get hung up and don't accomplish what Jesus has for them to accomplish. And they stay at the door and they never seek him any further. Because when they understand that the destiny that God has for them is really a cross. And the flesh is going to have to die. They say, wait a minute. Because it's wonderful for a prophet to come up to you and say, I see you standing on stages. I see you preaching to thousands. I see men and women just all over. I see you've got a voice to the nations and you shout and you fall out on the floor and you get up and you're excited and, and you start making a, a, a Facebook page for your ministry and a, get a website and, and whatever else other ministers do. And then all of a sudden you find out, wait a minute, this was really a cross. Nobody told me I was going to be crucified oh. ah. can I give you a qualification of a real seeker you gotta be willing to be crucified because I found out this was a cross I found out in order to preach in order to have church like I was so excited about doing come on hallelujah I was gonna have to be willing to bear rejection I was gonna have to be willing to bear betrayal and backbiting I found out that not everybody was going to love me not everybody was going to like me not everybody was going to sow into my ministry come on somebody I found out those that were following me around in revival when I was revival Sean when I was prophesying and healing everybody they didn't like it when the Lord started moving on me as pastor and I started to be authoritative and the ones that followed me in revival never followed me into the church and Ah. But that was my cross. I was going to be questioned about my decisions now. I was going to have to believe for a light bill now. Oh God. Come on, can I, can I be real with you? I was going to have to believe for a gas bill and a mortgage. I was going to have to go without paychecks. I was going to have to believe God for my own finances. If I was going to preach and do all the fun things I wanted to do, I was going to have to stand against Jezebel's now. I was going to have to stand against religious spirits. I just wanted to preach. I didn't want to carry a cross. I'm saying to you, if you're going to go after Jesus and accomplish what he's got for you, you're going to have to be willing to carry. I know you want to heal people, but that's awesome. But you're going to have to be willing to carry. Uh, I know you want to prophesy and feel the Holy Ghost and change people's lives. And that's wonderful. But you've got to carry a cross. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I told my wife, we were talking the other day, yesterday, as a matter of fact, I said, you know what, Lisa, I said, here's the problem. We say we want the unchurched until the unchurched come in with all their issues. So I, I get up here and say, man, I want the unchurched. I want the, those that ain't really. Give me those that ain't religious. Give me those that's come out of prostitution. Give me those that's come out of drug addiction. Well, you know, those that's come out of prostitution and drug addiction, do you know they're manipulators? All right. All 
And not everybody that gets saved gets rid of their manipulation. And you got to deal with that. I'm saying to you, we say we want the unchurched until they come in with their issues, until they come in with their problems and they don't know protocol and they don't know how to act and they don't know how to do and they got to be trained. That's the cross. See, we want the purpose, but we don't want it to be a Uh, yeah. Yeah. He, thank you. He said, he said, you have to take it up. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Somebody say, take up. Take up your cross. So that means you have to carry your cross. You have to carry your purpose. Oh, God, can I break this down? To carry anything is to have to bear the weight and the pressure of it. Your purpose has weight to it. Y'all need to understand this. I'm trying to teach you something. It has pressure to it. This is why I get folks that really want to help at first. And then after a while, they don't want to help no more. Because they don't understand that your purpose has weight to it. Whatever God calls you to do and opens a door for you to do, it has pressure to it. And though that pressure may not bear on my muscles and my bones physically, it bears on my mind. The pressure, the weight of your purpose bears on your mind. It bears on your heart. You feel it in your mind. You feel it in your emotions. Come on. Hallelujah. And not to mention that when Jesus carried his cross, watch this, he was carrying it with a body that had already been through hell. They didn't put a cross on him with a good, strong, rested physical body. No, they put the cross on a body that had been beaten, had been whipped. It had already lost most of its blood, most of its strength. Uh, But then they then they put the cross on him. And it wasn't that he just had to bear the weight to the pressure of the cross. He had to bear it with a body that had already been broken, that had already been whipped. It's not just that you've got to carry carry the pressure oh I'm either going to get you to I'm either going to get you to accept what God has for you or you're going to run from it this morning are you hearing me see it's not just that you have to carry the pressure of your cross or your purpose you have to do it with a mind and a heart that's already been weakened by everything else that you've already been through doesn't wait. I wish you would understand this. God doesn't have time to wait on you to get 100% healed before he calls you in. Sometimes you got to go in the middle of a divorce. You got to go in the middle of your brokenness. You got to go in the middle of bondages, in the middle of issues. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. He'll throw a cross on you on a mind that's already been through hell. It would be amazing. It would be amazing if I could just preach and pastor and do the things that I've got to do. And that weight wouldn't be so bad on my mind, but I got to do it while I'm being a husband. Are y'all following me? I got to do it while I'm being a father. I got to do it while I'm dealing with my own stuff. I got to do it while I'm dealing with my own demons. I've had to preach and cast demons out of people while I had demons tormenting me. I cast the devils out of them, but they wasn't nobody to cast the devil out of me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not just I want you to get a hold of this. You're going to go. You're going to have to step up because it's not just that you got to bear the weight of your purpose. You got to bear it with a mind that may not be at 100 percent. But do you want to hang out at the door? (laughs) Or do you want to be a seeker? If any man shall come after me, let him take his oppressed, wear it, wore out mind, 
hallelujah, and bear my cross too. <laughs> uh, but now here is where you can take the Philippian scripture and use it for your benefit that says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I know you want to use it about losing weight. That scripture ain't for your weight loss. That scripture is for Jesus to know that Jesus will get up with you. He'll get up under the cross. Is anybody? Come on. He says, my burden, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Why? Because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll, I'll help you carry it. I'll, is anybody glad Jesus will get up under it with you? He'll. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. I told you we, uh, we're going to kill the shout here. <laughs> uh, but notice, when he's talking about carrying your purpose, he compares it to carrying a cross, not a stick. Uh, hallelujah. I don't know. Hallelujah. Don't get too quiet on me. Amen. Help me out here. Uh, he says, when you're carrying your purpose, he compares it to a cross, not a stick, not a twig, but a cross. If I'm, watch this, if I'm carrying a stick, if I'm carrying a twig, uh, I can stick that thing in my pocket and forget I'm carrying it. If I'm carrying a stick, and I may be carrying it in my pocket. I may be carrying it in a satchel. I, I'm not always going to notice I'm carrying it. Why? Because I'm not always going to feel the pressure of it. I can put a stick in my pocket and forget about it. How many has ever looked around for your keys? Just to realize you had them in your pocket. Why did you not know you had them in the pocket the whole time? Because even though you were carrying them, you couldn't feel the pressure of them. And because you couldn't feel the pressure of it, you wasn't thinking about it. Hallelujah. You didn't know it was there. But you know, I, when I, when I, I work, I, I do construction part time. And in those days that I work, sometimes I have to carry around a ladder and... And, and But I'm never carrying a ladder on my shoulder going, where's my ladder? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Why? Because I'm constantly feeling the pressure of the ladder. When you're carrying your purpose, oh, come on, can I help somebody? Oh, God, come on, help me, church. We got to be a grown-up church. Do I got a grown-up church in here? Because a grown-up church knows that when I'm carrying my purpose, I'm going to feel the pressure of it, and therefore, I'm always going to be aware of it. Your purpose should never be off your mind. Why? Because it should be heavy enough that you always feel it. Oh God! See, he said, he said, take up your cross uh, daily. Hallelujah! I could have used two other scriptures uh, that said the same thing, but the other text uh, that wasn't Luke, they didn't put the word daily in there. They just said, take up your cross and follow me. I like how Luke put the word daily in there because daily confirms to us that he's not talking about a real cross, but he's talking about a spiritual cross. He's talking about something symbolic of your purpose because if it was a real cross, you wouldn't take it up daily. You'd take it up one time, one day, and then you'd go die on it. But because it says daily, it proves to us this cross is spiritual. That is speaking of your purpose. True seekers don't take days off from the pressure of their purpose. Mm, God. Let me say it one more time. Thank you. Hallelujah. True seekers that are following Jesus, that are not hanging out the door, but they're going deeper into the kingdom and discovering everything God has for them. They don't take days off from the pressure of their purpose. They're constantly feeling the pressure of their cross. 
That's why truth seekers can't get away from thinking about their purpose. They can't get away from talking about it. They can't get away from dreaming about it. It's why it affects every relationship that they have. It affects every decision that they make because you're carrying it. You're feeling the pressure of it daily in whatever you do and whatever you go into. You're always be bothered by that cross. Understand something. If you can make decisions and do things in life and in the kingdom that has no, I'm sorry, if you can make decisions and do things in life and the kingdom has no bearing on that decision you make and that thing you do and you don't have to prioritize the kingdom in order to do something and it's only a thought sometimes. Uh, and it's not there daily. It's not there in every decision you make with your finances and with your life and with your family and with your children. And, and, it, and it never comes into play when you're deciding on goals and you're deciding on paths to take. You're not carrying your cross. You're not seeking Jesus. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Yeah. If you can do anything and what you've got going on in the kingdom doesn't weigh on that and it doesn't matter to you and you can at any moment say, Pastor, um, I can't do this anymore. That's not a seeker. And you may have been carrying your cross, but you laid it down. Or you may have never even picked it up. Because when you're carrying that cross daily, that's your purpose. That thing is going to weigh on you. You got to understand, there was four years that I didn't pastor, but there was not a time in the four years that ministry and God and releasing this gift didn't weigh on my mind. Why? It was my, it was my cross. It was my purpose. It was my destiny to the point that it got to the place where I looked at my wife and said I know I'm preaching every now and then and I know I'm still going to church but I said I'm supposed to be teaching every Sunday I'm supposed to be preaching at least once a week I I got to do I got to get because I couldn't get rid of the pressure God said I need some folks that can't get rid of the pressure I need some folks that can't go to sleep without the pressure you can't wake up in the morning without the pressure you can't go to work without the pressure. It's my, it's my cross. And I cannot lay it down. Whew, hallelujah. Are y'all still with me? He says, if any man will come after me, let him, what? Deny himself. And then take up his cross daily and follow me. Let him deny himself. Somebody say, deny yourself. Deny yourself. Let me get through this quickly as I can. Hallelujah. Two reasons you got to deny yourself in order to take up your cross daily to be a seeker of Jesus. Number one is your cross will kill yourself. Remember, we said, <laughs> if you're not struggling with your flesh to fulfill your purpose, then it's not your purpose. Self will not want to carry its purpose and go through the things that it's got to go through for its purpose. And it doesn't want to sacrifice all that it needs to sacrifice for its purpose. So then, if you're going to pick up your cross, you've got to deny yourself. Because self don't want to go to the cross. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you with me? Let me teach you what deny yourself means because I don't think you all understand. For the phrase deny yourself comes from a Greek word that means, watch this, to forget oneself. Yeah. Lose sight of oneself 
and one's own interests. Watch me, please. To deny yourself is not to just have this fight against the flesh that doesn't want to obey God and you constantly go back and forth and tuggle with your flesh and, and, and one minute you're saying no to your flesh and you're doing what God wants you to do but the next minute you're giving in to yourself and you're walking in those disobedience and then the next minute you're saying no to your flesh. No, that may be part of the process but that is not you denying yourself. That's not self-denial. Let me tell you, denying yourself, watch this, is coming to a place where there is no struggle. <laughs> because you've forgotten self and you've lost sight of self. Have you ever had somebody bring someone's name up to you and you were like, well, who did you say? And they, they uh, Jimmy, Jimmy from Jimmy, you know, little Jimmy from down the street. They used to used to come over to the house when we were kids. Man, I haven't thought about Jimmy in years. I forgot about him. Anybody know what I'm talking about? What that means is Jimmy never once crossed your mind. You never once thought about Jimmy. You never once thought about how Jimmy was doing. You never once ever cared what Jimmy thought. Come on, somebody. You never asked Jimmy an opinion about what you were doing because you forgot about Jimmy. You lost sight of Jimmy. Can I help somebody in this place? That's what it means to deny yourself. It means to forget about yourself. It means self doesn't cross your mind. It means you don't care what self thinks about what God is telling you to do. That It means you never once check with the opinion of yourself when God says to move. If that's not you, you have not denied. And if you ain't denied yourself, you haven't. And if you haven't took up your cross, you're not seeking. Is this too hard for you? This oh, God. See, the reason you have to deny yourself to take up your cross is... Because the cross is not about you. Are you hearing me? The cross is not about you. Jesus' cross was not about him. It was about those that he was paying the price for. You have to deny yourself in order to take up your cross daily and follow Jesus because the cross that you're bearing, the purpose, the destiny is not about you. It's about who you're going to deliver by carrying it. Let me help you with something. You're not going to shout on this, but I'm going to preach it anyway. Are you ready? Self doesn't get filled and satisfied at the cross. It gets used and abused. Oh, you don't want me to talk about this because we're living in a gospel age and a church age where it's all self-help and self-centered and all about self and all about you fulfilling your dreams and all about get so sick of it. All about you fulfilling your dreams and your careers and living your best life. The devil is a liar. I need somebody that's willing to die for somebody else. I need somebody that will say, Sean, I'll starve so they can eat. I'll I'll go broke so they can pay their bills. I'll give up my time so they can have time. I... That's the gospel. I don't know what we're preaching today, but it ain't the gospel. That's the gospel. The gospel is not spa treatments. And got to have time for yourself. Gospel is give everything. Drain yourself so that somebody can live. And then when the trumpet sounds and Jesus comes back, you can get filled up then. But until then, work while it's day. Come on, somebody. Because they're going to hell and we're letting them. They're dying and we're letting them. Come on, somebody. They're struggling and being took out and we're letting them. Yeah. 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 
I sowed and I got this new car. But give it to a single mother who doesn't have one. Sold and got this new car. Somebody say my cross, my destiny. It's not about me. It's about those that will be delivered by it. But understand something. It's because of those that will be delivered by your cross that will give you the strength to deny yourself. It did it for Jesus. Put Hebrews 12 and 2 up there. Look at Hebrews 12 and 2. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You know what that means? That means he was the first one to walk in our faith. And he was he walked in it completely and perfectly. He was the author and the finisher of our faith. He showed us how to walk in that faith. He showed us how to be faithful. He showed us how to trust the Father. He showed us how to believe for miracles. He showed us how to heal the sick. He showed us how to raise the dead. He showed us how to be submitted. He was the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him did what? endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God understand something for the joy that was set before him what was the joy that was set before him on the cross that old song says when he was on the cross I was on his mile I was the joy I was the reason he didn't have to go to the cross and get up on the third day to get anything for himself he already had it but he left every Thing for me oh for the joy of seeing Sean Campbell preach at Hope Church on Sunday morning oh God he endured the cross and it says he despised the shame that word despised means to think nothing of think little or nothing of he thought little or nothing of the shame his self never crossed his mind he denied himself it never crossed his mind why because he knew what was coming out of it oh, oh god does anybody understand something of this today I know I'm preaching a hard message to you. I know I'm preaching something that is tug. It's just, it's just, it's just punching your flesh right in the gut. Are you hearing me? I understand that, but I need some folks that even though you may have to go through it, you're glad to go through it because somebody's coming out. Come on, somebody. I, I need some folks in this house that will say, Sean, I'm ready to sell out for whatever Jesus needs because somebody is about to get delivered come on if you want revival you gotta carry your cross come on somebody if you want revival <laughs> see that's what we don't preach that revival requires you to carry your cross Jesus I got this and one more thing and I'm done Jesus had to deny himself in order to take up his cross. Look at Matthew 26 and 39. It says, and he went a little further, fell on his faith, face and prayed saying, oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. This cup of the bitterness of death. Let it pass from me. If there's another way to do this, let there be another way. Nevertheless, watch this, not as I will, which tells us Jesus had a will. He had to because he came in the flesh and God said to physical man in the very beginning, come on, have dominion. And when Jesus came in the flesh, one of the things he got was free will. 
And so Jesus, even Jesus had a will that he had to deny. He had a self that he had to deny. And he said, not as I will, but as thou will. Jesus had a will. His will was always tempted to go against the will of his father. Hebrews says he was tempted upon all points as we are. Oh, but without sin, he never went against the will of his father. He never gave in to the temptation. He never rebelled. He always denied self. But watch this. We see here, and I want to teach you something. Can I teach you something? Amen. We see here that his self-will was not to drink the bitter cup of death. But we see that he denied his will and he accepted the will of the Father. Understand this principle. This prayer in the garden was not a five-minute prayer. This was an all-night prayer. This was a prayer where his disciples couldn't stay awake and pray with him. This was a prayer where they all fell asleep and Jesus was alone and he was by himself and, and he was in this battle with the will of the flesh. Does anybody hear me? It was such a great battle that the Bible says that he felt sorrow in his flesh. He felt like he was going to die. He felt sorrow unto death. He felt like he was going to die in the garden. In this season of prayer, this prayer was so anguishing. It was such a stressful season of prayer in the garden that the Bible said his sweat became as drops of blood. Scientifically proven that you can be under so much anguish and so much shock and so much anxiety and so much stress that your blood capillaries that are located next to your sweat glands can burst from the pressure and blood can come through the pores where your sweat comes through. Are you hearing me? This wasn't a five minute prayer that Jesus prayed, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but that will be done. This wasn't some five minute prayer that he prayed. No, this was an all night prayer where he battled and struggled alone with his self, with his flesh. He was wrestling with his will and it climaxed in this prayer that we read here. It climaxed finally. Jesus saying Lord if there's no other way for me to save the world from their sins I'll drink the cup not my will <laughs> come on somebody but your will be done are you here let me teach you something it was in the garden that he killed his flesh. It was in the garden that he won the battle over his will. It was in the garden that he denied himself. And so when he started carrying his cross and he went to Pilate's hall and he was in the trial and he was before the public. Are you hearing me? And he was wrongly accused and they were provoking him. And Pilate was saying, say something. If you're the king of the Jews, defend yourself. Oh, if you're the king of the Jews, why don't you take yourself down off of the cross? If you could do all these miracles, do a miracle and get yourself off the cross. See, when he was before the public and he was provoked in his flesh. Are you hearing me? The Bible says he never opened his mouth. He was like a lamb led to the slaughter are you hearing me in other words self never rose up in public 
<laughs> self never rose up when he was carrying out his purpose self never rose up when everybody was watching him are you hearing me he was totally surrendered what is your point preacher I wish you'd get to it alright here it is my point is this he fought his flesh and defeated it in the garden in private before he ever stepped into his purpose in front of the public Oh, you're not talking back to me. I hope I didn't lose you. The problem in the church is we're trying to carry a cross without going to the garden first. Oh, you didn't hear me. Let me say that one more time. The problem with the church is we're trying to carry a cross without going to the garden first. We went to the garden maybe, but it was a five-minute prayer. Not my will, but thine be done. Look how holy I am. Look how committed I am. Look how... Oh, shut up. You need to get back in that closet until you come out sweating, until you come out crying, until your makeup is running, until your hair's messed up, because there is a flesh in you that if you don't kill it now, it'll come out. When the public start, mm. and so the problem with the churches today, we've got men and women claiming to be seekers, carrying their cross, but they never went to the garden first. And so what's happening is we've got preachers that are stealing money from the offering. We got preachers sleeping around with women in the church that are not their wife. We've got preachers that are being able to be manipulated by boards and big checks. Why? This is because the flesh should have died in the garden with intimacy with the Father. Hallelujah. But it's still alive while they're... I need some dead folk in here. Do I got any dead folk in here that would say the world can't move me? Money can't move me. Your applause can't move me. Yeah. 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 You can't be a seeker if you don't carry your cross. You can't carry your cross if you don't deny yourself. You can't deny yourself if you don't go to the garden first and wrestle with that addiction wrestle with that past come on somebody wrestle with that insecurity wrestle with it until you kill it wrestle with it till it dies wrestle with it until it never shows up again are you hearing me Say this with me. Look at the person next to you. Say, neighbor, if you never go to the garden, you can't go to the cross. Hallelujah. Finally, finally, I'm closing with this. Something I've seen interesting as I was studying this. The Crucifixion was a major part of the Roman culture. It was a major part of the Roman justice system. And they did it. They did it publicly. And so one of the things they did publicly when they would crucify someone is they would make them carry the cross. And they'd make them carry the cross like Jesus did in the public. Part of it was to humiliate them as the people looked on them and saw their shame. The other part of it was to put fear in the people's hearts to make them fear Rome and let them know hey we're not somebody to mess with pay your taxes give Caesar what belongs to Caesar and we won't have no problems are you hearing me and so the disciples knew exactly what Jesus was talking about when he was saying take up your cross and carry they had seen these crucifixions it was common but in the Roman crucifixion, here's what I found. Many times, watch this, many times when they made someone carry the cross, many times they would only make them carry, watch this, the vertical beam of the cross. And then later they would come 
once they got the vertical beam of the cross up the hill or wherever they was going to be crucified, they would eventually bring the horizontal beam and add it to the vertical beam. Can I talk to somebody before we leave? And I don't know if you'll get this or not. But the part of the cross, the part of your cross that you need to focus on carrying is the vertical part. And God said, I'll take care of the horizontal. I know some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. In other words, God's saying, if you'll carry the vertical part of your purpose, the pressure of your cross is the pressure of the vertical beam. Come on, somebody. The vertical beam. God says, if you'll focus on the vertical, look at somebody and say, if you'll focus on the vertical, God will take care of the horizontal. What does that mean? That means that you need to focus on worshiping me. You need to focus on prayer. Come on, hallelujah. You need to focus on praise. You need to focus on hearing from God. God says if you'll focus on the vertical, God said, I'll take care of the horizontal. In other words, God says if you'll take care of the vertical, if you'll take care of the worship, if you'll take care of the prayer, the praise and hearing from me, God said, I'll cause men and women to get healed. Oh, I wish somebody had a praise left in them. I, I'll cause men and women to get delivered. I'll take care of the connections and the favor that you need. I'll open the doors that you need. I'll take care of the Jezebels working through people. I'll take care of the haters that are coming against you. God says if you'll take care of the vertical, I'll take care of your family. I'll take care of y'all. Somebody better praise God about that. I'll take care of your marriage. I'll take care of your kids. I'll take care of your job. I'll take care of that boss that's ringing down your neck. I'll take care of your car. I'll take care of the horizontal if you'll take care of the vertical. Come on, stand on your feet today. Uh, yeah. 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 Look at somebody next to you and say, take care of the vertical. And I'll take care of the horizontal. Oh, y'all got weak on me. Somebody say to your neighbor, say, neighbor, take care of the vertical. He'll take care of the horizontal. Woo. Oh, you need scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added up. Come on, somebody. Don't be weary in your well-doing for in due season you shall reap if you come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take care of the vertical. Because Peter, listen to me. Peter and John, when they healed the lame man at the gate called Beautiful, they wasn't going to heal the lame man. They were going to the temple at the hour of prayer. Amen. They were taking care of the vertical. And God took care of uh, Come on, somebody. Allah will shut do you understand that where Paul was when him and Barnabas or, or him and Barnabas was called out on their first missionary journey? Do you know where they were? They were in a house ministering to God. They were taking care of the vertical and the Holy Ghost got on some prophets. I think they might have been female. But anyway, the Holy Ghost got on some prophets and they prophesied to Paul and Barnabas and said, the Holy Ghost has separated you out. And they began their first missionary journey. Your part, the pressure of the cross is the vertical part. God will take care of the horizontal. The problem with some folks is 
that when they get to carrying their cross, they get to try to carrying both. They get to trying to pray and praise and worship and make everything else happen. God said, if you'll carry the vertical, I'll take care of the horizontal. Oh God, hallelujah. Can you lift your hands in this place just for a moment and just honor him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you. Oh, you're wonderful, God. We'll worship here in a moment before we leave. But those that are ready, here's what I want to do. Hallelujah. Kaya boshatasaya. Those that are ready to be seekers of Jesus. Here's what we're going to do this morning. You don't have to, but if you really, if you really, this message really hits you and you're ready to be a, you want to be a seeker, you want to carry a cross. Because listen, this church needs some cross carriers. We need some seekers. Come on, amen. I said we need some seekers. For what God's getting ready to do, we need some seekers. Do I know, do I know exactly what God's getting ready to do and and do I know how to handle it? Nah, but he does. I'm focusing on the vertical part of my cross. I'm going to let him show up with the horizontal. Hallelujah. He'll, get, he'll show up with the wisdom. He'll show up with the instructions. But do you believe God's getting ready to do something great in this house? That, listen, that the trickle that we've been seeing of people... Is going to turn into a flood. Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. I believe that. So what God is saying is, if that's going to happen, I need some true seekers, qualified seekers, those that have denied themselves, take up their cross daily. Are you hearing me? And follow me. Does everybody have a revelation of that scripture now? I preached it about the best that I can preach it. Hallelujah. But God's saying, I need some seekers in this house. There's revival. It's happening, but it's getting ready to grow. And I need some seekers. Are you ready? Is there, uh, uh, do I got some seekers? If you're a seeker, you're ready to be a seeker. Hallelujah. I want you to just come down here to the front. Hallelujah. I know we don't have no music or nothing. That's all right. We don't need music. Hallelujah. We're untraditional. Hallelujah. Thank you. I just want you to come down here. And this is what the Lord spoke to me to do. I'll get my wife and mom to help me. Can y'all hang out just for a moment while we do this? Hallelujah. Don't, uh, <laughs> don't get out of the spirit if this takes just a little bit. Hallelujah. And then I'll go to the piano and, and, and we'll sing something and worship just a little bit. And if y'all have to leave, then you can leave. If you just want to stay and worship for a few minutes, you can. But the Lord told me to go around and we're going to anoint everyone with oil because I, I believe this is this is this is a defining this is a what I want to say this is a sh the, the church is sh our church is shifting right now are you hearing me and I'm not saying it's the new year so we're shifting you know our Gregorian calendar ain't even the Hebrew calendar that God goes by anyway he's got his own calendar the new year in in God's new year started three or four and five months ago hallelujah are you hearing me so I'm not going by all that but I'm just saying I, I feel that right now there is a shift in this church and every time that God has ever uh, caused me to see sense or preach some some kind of shift in our church it was because he was getting ready to do something something was getting ready to happen Amen. and something's getting ready to happen in this place are you hearing me hallelujah and so <clears throat> I just want to, we're just going to go by and lay hands. <clears throat> I'll give you some oil here. Hallelujah. We're just going to go by and just anoint everyone that's standing up here. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's do this real quick and then we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for these seekers, God. Hallelujah. And y'all just, <clears throat> hallelujah. Mom, you just go behind me and just anoint. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We anoint these seekers, God. 
Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We anoint. My signs you'll see. Shalomon trebe ke antamo tasaya. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. My signs you'll see. My karoshantaya. Lord, a new day, God. Lord, this is a new day. This is a new hour, Lord. Oh, my signs you'll see. Oh, my signs Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, Molo, Santa la Mona. Oh, Mama de la Bosa. Oh, Mana de la Conde Kayana High. Ida Moconda la Madi de Candana Motaya. Oh, Mana de la Calabota Saya. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, Marika Namota Saya. Oh, Marika Namota Saya. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Santa Lobos Saya. Father, right now, in the, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. God, let a fresh oil, God, fall in this house this morning, right now, God. God, let a fresh oil fall. God, I know your oil is falling on our young people, God, wherever they're at, Lord. But, Lord, let a fresh oil fall in this house, God, on every adult, Lord, God. On every older generation this morning, God, let a fresh oil. Come on, I want you to receive a fresh oil. Hallelujah. Oh, but I did the most. Come on, renewed strength. Renewed strength. Renewed strength, come on. Renewed strength, hello, Oh, God, we release renewed strength in this house, Lord. Strengthen your people, God. Oh, come up under their crosses. God, let crosses be discovered. Let them be took up. Let them be carried. God, let self be denied in the gardens, God. Wherever they're at, Lord, as they're seeking you and coming after you, give them strength for it, God. Oh, come on, God's moving. Come on, church, God's moving. Oh, God, let a Oh, Balabosa Talabosa. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, worship him, church. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Oh, as you're standing there, just worship him. God, those that have not discovered their crosses, let there be a discovery right now. Oh, begin to give them visions. Begin to give them dreams. Speak to their heart. Oh, my signs you'll see. Kola la bosha, yeah. I hear the Lord saying, I've called you into deeper things. I've called you into deeper things. Quit worrying about what you're going through and come after me, says the Lord. You're so focused on your problems and your life and your situation. God says, that's the horizontal. Hallelujah. I need you to carry the vertical. Quit focusing on your finances. Quit focusing on you and your issues. Focus on the vertical. 
Come after me. I'll take care of the horizontal. Malala Bosha, yeah. Oh, la, 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 bosa, yeah. oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. 